All right, let's, uh, let's get started. So today, we're going to talk about assignment three. Okay, so I will give you, first give you an overview of what assignment three looks like and what you are supposed to do in assignment three. Then I um, will we'll try to study how to design the design doc, to write up the design document by uh, learning how dump VM works and how uh, by fully understanding dump VM. And then I will give you some key points when you uh, write your design document, what to address and what to explain in the document. Um, so this is a summary. Uh, so it has coloring questions as usual. And it has design document of which these two are due this Friday afternoon. Um, so basically, design, uh, you can split it a summary into three stages. Right? So first stage, you do physical memory uh, management. You uh, allocate three physical pages inside the kernel. And that's the first stage. The second stage, you design the user address space and also the page table. And you do with all kinds of TLB handle, uh, management and all that. And finally, uh, you will do swapping. So in the, first two set, in, the fir in the very first stage, where you don't uh, need to worry about user address space or page table at all. You just allocate and free physical pages. Right? In the second stage, you can assume you have enough memory. So when you want to allocate a physical, physical page, use the function you implement in the first stage, you can assume that you can always get a physical page. You have enough memory, right? And finally, you can uh, shrink the memory size. Now you cannot assume that every time you want a page, you will get a page. There, is, there are certain instances where when you want a physical page, there is no free physical pages available. So you need to swap the physical page out to the disk. And also maybe later on, uh, you, when, you, when some user program access that page, you need to swap that page in from disk to memory. right? So here, uh, this is other three stages of assignment three. You can do this uh, incrementally. And, and all the functions you implement in, implemented in the, first, in the previous stages that you will use in the last stage. For example, in the first stage, you will design many two functions. Allocate a kernel uh, physical page and free a kernel, uh, free a physical page, right? So this is basically the two functions you write in the first stage. And then in the second stage, you basically need to design the user address space. Then you have your page table design. Then you, the, there, in the second stage, one main function you want to write is the VM fault how to handle the virtual memory um, page fault or TLB fault. And finally, when you do swapping, there are two main functions that you want to write, which is uh, swap out a page or swap in a page. Right? So th these are the three stages of assignment three. And you want to do this strictly in this order. You don't want to do swapping first, and then, phys uh, then physical memory management, management, because you cannot do swapping or address space without a physical memory management block ready, right? So you want to do this in this order. First deal with the physical memory, then use address space, then swapping. So, so as you know that in, some, in assignment three, you are supposed to implement the virtual memory system, right? So first of all, what is a virtual memory system? What's the interface of it? What's the functionality of it, right? So this is what you would expect from a virtual memory system, from uh, uh, either from a user program's point of view or from other part of the kernel's point of view. So our virtual memory system are supposed to manage all the physical pages. You can imagine in this scenario, the resources that the kernel manages is the, all the physical pages, right? physical memories. And in particular, this virtual memory system should be able to uh, allocate a physical page and reclaim a physical page. It should, it should, pro, it should provide such functionality, right? And also, uh, the virtual memory system are supposed to do the translation between the virtual address space and physical address space, right? As you already learned from the lectures, every um, address you used in user, user space is virtual address, right? You, the user always uses virtual address. And when you actually want to get the content from the, that virtual address, you need to transla that, translate that virtual address into a physical address. Right? That translation is done or is managed by the virtual memory system. 
and in particular, you want to uh, you you will need to uh, manage the TLB for the translation. So this is the interface or the functionality of the virtual memory system. These are the functionalities that you should implement in this assignment. And let's look at the interface of each functionality one by one. So first of all, we have physical patch management. Right? For this, we have many two, uh, two functions that's uh, important. Other, all others are just some auxiliary functions that you write to help you do the, do the job. So first of all, we have a function called VM Bootstrap. This function is an initialization module for this virtual memory system. Right? This function will be called by the kernel in the boot up pro, uh, process to tell the VM, hey, I'm booting up. Do you have any data structures you want to initialize? For example, you may, you may have a big static array. This is the where you want to initialize that uh, whatever data structure you use for the virtual memory system. And then we have these two very important uh, function called allocated care pages and free care pages. As the name suggests, allocated care pages are supposed to give you uh, n number of pages, where n could be one, two, or three, four, and so on, right? So this is the two uh, most important uh, functions you need to write for this, uh, in, in the first stage, the physical memory management. So we also have a function called free care pages, where the caller of the free care pages tell the virtual memory system that I'm done with the physical page. Now it's OK for you to reclaim it. You can wipe the content. You can mark the status of the page, whatever you want to do. So this is other two interfaces that allow the virtual memory system to provide um, the physical patch management to other part of the system. Right? Then we have uh, two TLB related functions called TLB shutdown or TLB shutdown all. Um, in the, at, the, at the first stage, when you do the physical patch management, you don't have to worry these functions too much. Or uh, for now, you can just leave it empty. Right? You, you can just do nothing inside these functions. Um, so, but later on, when you do user address space and you have con when you have context switches, you may want to modify these two functions to do the job that the name suggests, where TLB shutdown will close one TLB entry or flush out one TLB entry. We, uh, TLB shutdown all will uh, flush all the TLB entries. But for now, just leave it alone. Um, and finally, we have one function called VM, VM fault. Again, in the first stage where you do the physical patch management, you can just ignore this function. This function is important in the second stage where you want to manage a user address space. So far, uh, if you, when you're working on the physical patch management, management you don't have any user program running. So nobody will trigger a VM fault. So you can just leave this function alone. But you, can, uh, you will worry about this function in the second stage. Um, let's take a look at what the, any questions so far about this page, about physical page, uh, physical page management? So as I said in the slides, the functions are defined in vm.h. So, so this function basically defines the, the interface of the virtual memory system. So we have vm bootstrap, which is to initialize the data structures of your virtual memory system. Sorry about that. Um, we have vm fault. For now, just leave it alone when you're working on the physical pages. Uh, then we have allocated care pages and free care pages. You can see that the allocated care pages where is that? Okay. Oh, sorry. I just uh, apply this. And keep this configuration. So allocated page, care pages take one argument, which is how many number, uh, how many pages that the caller wants to allocate. 
And free k pages take one argument, which is where the initial uh, address of the physical page. From this two, what can you tell from the, uh, what, what can you say about these two functions? So when I say I want to allocate four pages, can you just return me any number of arbitrary four pages scattered around all the physical address space? That has, that has to be continuous, right? So because allocated k pages just return the start address of the first page. So an uh, Im implicit assumption of the allocated pa pages is that this these pages has to be physically continuous with each other, right? Say I want to allocate four pages, then you have to return four continuous pages instead of just some random four package, f random four pages uh, all around the physical address space. So uh, similarly, when user want to free the these pages, all you have or all you can get from the function is the start address of the uh, the chunk of pages, right? So this gives you a hint, right? Uh, when you receive uh, receive a free k pages call, the only thing you get is the start address of the physical pages. A natural question to ask is, how do you know how many pages to free? Right? That's something you need to consider when you uh, do this physical page uh, management. That's just one of the questions you need to consider. And finally, we have one more offline here. And finally, we have these TLB-related functions, which I suggest you to leave, leave it alone in the first stage. Um, so this is the first part, of, which related to physical patch management. And the second part of the interface is related to um, user address space management, which basically the AS on scope function family. Right? I, some of them you, are very, you become very familiar with in SM2, like AS create, AS destroy, AS copy, which you use in fork, AS activate, which you use in child fork entry, um, AS define stack, which you use in sys exec v, right? So there are some other functions that um, you need to understand what else they are supposed to do and how, why you may want to change the implementation of it. So this, um, so, Create, destroy, copy, activate, define stack is quite obvious, right? You know what it does. AS define region and AS prepare load and complete load is called during the load elf process, where this function tells you that, um, so in load elf, the, you give a binary, user binary. The load elf are supposed to load that binary into memory, right? You do that in exact V when you want to execute a new user program. So AS define region basically tells the virtual memory system right, that this user program has a, such a region with a start address and with the length of that region. So the AS define region is the interface of the virtual memory system to receive how many regions that the user program has. And also prepare load is to tell the virtual memory system that the load L function now has, are ready to load all this content into memory. And complete, complete load tells the virtual memory system that load L is done with the, uh, the loading part. So let's take a look at the load L function and see how uh, these functions are called. I don't know why I... Let's see. Oh, I have it here. Good. Never mind. Um, So let's open the log L function, which is in where?
um, in a cemetery, you will find yourself that you need to understand the implementation of log elf to be able to uh, implement the three functions correctly, which is uh, define region, um, uh, prepare load, and complete load. So here, log elf basically do load the user exact user binary in a loop where it um, read all those regions. So log elf will first tell the virtual memory system that user program has this, 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 and regions. There could be a variable number of regions that use a program. Typically, uh, a program has two, which is code segment and data segment. But some user program may have more regions or segments, right? So log elf first call AS define region to tell the virtual memory system where the region is. You, you have a virtual address start, you have a memory size, which is the size of the region. You have the permission of the region. Different regions have different, different permissions. For example, the code regions are read-only. Right? You cannot write to a code region. That will overwrite the user's, user's code. And the data region is read or readable and writable. Right? Um, so later on, when you, so for example, when you get a patch fault, say a user program wants to write a virtual address, the first thing you want to figure out is that which region that virtual address belongs to, right? So that you can check the permission. For example, if you have a write uh, page fault to a page, and then you figure out that this page is read-only, then you should reject such page fault by, I don't know, maybe panic or kill the user program, right? So this is the info where you want to record or you want to record what you, uh, what's the permission of the region, or what's every information you need for each region. So later on, when you have a patch fault, you can check against that. Or another case would be you have a patch fault on a virtual address, but you find out that that, that virtual address doesn't belong to any regions. Then what do you can infer? That's the invalid user address, right? You should reject that instead of allocate pages for that. So th that's AS define region, which basically tell you which regions are there. Then you have this prepare load, which just to tell you the virtual memory system is, uh, just to, to tell you the load elf program is ready to load this content into memory. And why does it matter? So there are basically two approaches to allocate pages. Say a user uh, code segment is five pages. There are two options when you want to implement a virtual memory system. Whether you allocate these five pages uh, um, on demand, which means that you don't allocate any physical pages at all when users start um, running. Then when you, whenever you have a page fault, you figure out whether or not it's a valid address, address. then if it's valid, you allocate pages at this time. That's a one approach which is called on-demand page allocation. Right? Or another design option could be uh, you just allocate, pre-allocate all the pages for the user whether you don't care if the user actually access it or not, right? This is where, so if you decide to implement the second strategy where you want to pre-allocate all the pages for the user without triggering any VM fault later on, you can do it here. So this is where basically the load elf tells you that I'm going to load all the content into memory. I'm going to write all those pages. Whether or not you want to allocate the pages at this point or later on when there is a page fault, it's up to you. But at least the load elf system tells you that he's, he's about to write to that pages. And then you, we have a lot, uh, we read the content from the disk and load the content to memory, load segment. And finally, when the load elf is done um, loading the contents or the segments, they call as complete load. Right? So this is how the other part of the system, in this case, load elf we use the interface of the virtual memory. In order to implement those interfaces correctly, you need to understand how those interfaces are going to be used. This is a great example of how this interface will be used in practice. So we have the uh, user address space related to virtual, mem uh, virtual memory interfaces. Any questions about this part? Um, this is, so the, today's content is also the stuff you want to discuss in the design documents. 
right? So you know what to do, implement the virtual memory system. You know what's required, that's what we're doing. We want to identify what in interfaces we want to provide, what the functions you want to implement. Then um, you, you need to discuss how do you want to do it, how to design all those functions. And today we will learn that by see how DAM VM does that and how you can improve upon that. This is our way to approach the design documents. First, identify what's there to be done and then see what's already there. So what's the dump VM has already done. Then you can discuss what you can improve upon dump VM. So this is the second part, which is address space related um, interfaces. So finally, we have uh, one more system called to implement for a cemetery, which is called S-Break. Uh, S-Break is basically the sys call that user can use to request memories. This is related to the heap uh, allocation, which you will do in the second stage. So you can read the menu pages of SBREC and figure out what SBREC are supposed to do and implement that. I assume at this point you are very familiar with all the syscall stuff. So you can um, play with it. So now we have finished the going over all the interfaces or all, all the functions you are supposed to implement in a cemetery. Now let's take a look at how dump VM accomplish these functionalities, right? Dump VM is also a virtual memory system. He needs to do all we have discussed. So let's see how dump VM does it. So in terms of physical memory allocation, uh, dump VM implemented these two functions. One is allocated care pages and free care pages, right? So the way dump VM, dump VM does it is really dump in the sense that, so this is, suppose this is the whole physical memory, right? Suppose you have like 16 megabytes of memory. This will be physical address zero. This will be physical address 16, 16 megabytes. And when you put the assist 161, it will load the kernel in somewhere in the physical memory, right? The kernel will occupy some physical memories. Let's suppose this first P address is where uh, right after the kernel's uh, memories, kernels pages. So this is basically the first available physical addresses. And then we have the last physical address, which is basically the size of the memory. So from the first physical address and uh, to the last physical address is where the available physical pages or physical memories are, right? This is, if you want to manage all the physical pages, this is the pages you want to manage, right? And how dump VM manages these physical pages? Any idea? When, you, when I call allocated care pages, say I want to allocate five pages, what dump VM does? So what dump VM do to give me those five pages? Yeah, so basically you have this available number of pages, right? Whenever I want to allocate five pages, it just forward this first physical address by that many. Say I want to allocate four pages, four physical pages. It just forward this to four physical pages and they return this chunk to me. Right? Next time I want to allocate eight physical pages. It forward this first physical address again here. Right? Keep forwarding. When I call free care pages, what it, what it does do? What does dumb VM do? Nothing. So I keep forwarding this pointer until this first physical address is equals to or larger than last physical address. This, at that point, dumb VM will just panic. So as you can see that dumb VM really don't have the capability of managing it in the sense of allocate and reclaim. Dumb VM can only allocate it for you, but dumb VM doesn't have a way to reclaim all those physical pages. When you call free physical pages, free K pages in the in the easy case, dumb VM just does nothing, right? So this is clearly not desirable. We want to manage all those physical pages instead of just uh, panic when we run out, right? We should be able to claim them. And you actually you can see that from the code of dumb VM. So take a look at allocate. K pages. 
what does it do? Call this magical function called get p pages, get, which stands for get physical pages. And you jump to get p pages. It well, dumb VM is certainly cl cl clever enough to to know the user lock to protect the access to the memory. Because this is one thing you also need to consider when you implement your own virtual memory system. Because this physical memory is system wide, so you may have multiple threads that call allocated cache pages at the same time. Right? You want some synchronization primitives to protect access. In this case, Dom VM decides to use a spin lock. Right? So it first acquires a spin lock, then it calls this function, which is called RAM steal memory. It is just a still keep stealing memory from the RAM system until it runs out, right? If you go to the RAM steal memory, you will see that's what exactly that's the exactly what we have described in the slide. So it just forward this first physical address by that number of bytes and keep doing that until it runs out of memory, right? So if here in this case. The first physical address plus the size is larger than the last physical address. It just returns zero, which means there is no more memory. Right? And in that case, get p pages will return zero, and it will return zero all the way up, and eventually somewhere it will panic. So this is how dump VM manages the physical memory. Clearly, the limitation is there is no reclaim or recycling happening here. And it just keeps stealing the RAM until it runs out, right? How you want to? How do you want to improve this? How would you manage the physical pages? Clearly, you need to maintain some information about each the status of each each physical pages, so you know that when I want to allocate, I just scan my data structure, figure out which pages are available, and return that, right? When I uh, when somebody call free cache pages, I want to mark those pages as available again. So next time, I can return them to ask some other program. So there is one data structure called call map, which is very important um, in physical memory management. Basically, call map is the data structure that has the information of the status of all the physical pages. Right? You can just imagine it as Kind of similar to the file tables or process tables, but it's different from that in, sen in the sense that the size of call map is fixed. Say you have 200 physical pages in total. The how many entries are there in your call map? 200 fixed, right? There is no allocation and stuff. Just you just figure out how many physical pages are there and initialize the call map of that size. So you need to think about what information you want to keep to, for each physical page. Right? For example, uh, most of the basic information is whether this page is available or not. Right? That's one flag to in indicate the availability of the physical page. What about others? What, are the, what other information you, you want to keep for each physical page? That we will discuss in detail next time. So, but this time I just want to give you an overview of assignment three, so you know what to write in the in the design document. That's certainly something you want to discuss in the design document, right? What the comment looks like. And uh, secondly, how does Dom VM handle user address space? So this is what the user address virtual address space looks like. We have virtual address zero. We have virtual address. OX and a median, which is the user's best top. So inside that, uh, user have a cool region, which is a co couple of pages, and a data region, maybe one or two pages, and also a heap, which is variable and can grow downwards all the way up. And at the top of the user address, address space, we have a stack that starts from the user's best top and then grows downwards. Right? This, this is what a user address space looks like. And let's take a look how dumb VM handled this stuff. So first of all, you can see what assumptions that dumb VM makes of the user address space. What is that? You can see it's a D base one, P base one, N pages, which corresponding to the first 
segment. V base 2, P base 2, N pages 2, which is corresponding to the second segment. Only two segments. So DOMVM assumed that there will be only two segments in the user address space. If the user address has more than two segments, then sorry, DOMVM cannot handle it. It will panic or do some, some narrow city, right? So this is one assumption that DOMVM um, assumes that user address, user program will always have two, at most two regions. And finally, we have a physical address called AS stack, stack P base, which stands for stack physical base address. What, it, what does that mean? So this is a physical address, one value, which point to the physical base of the stack, right? So another assumption that DumbVM makes is that the size of the stack is fixed. And you will see that in, in OS 1.6.1, DumbVM, I think is 12 or something like that. Maybe not 12, but it's a fixed number. So DumbVM assumes that the user stack is fixed sized. So, it, so that they can use one, uh, one physical address to store the base of the stack. Say, for example, this P base is OX and medium minus four times the page size. In that case, DumbVM assumes that the user stack is at most four pages. If the user stack has some like infinite recursive calls like which expand the stack beyond that uh, four pages, DumbVM will just panic. Because DumbVM assumes that the stack size is, the maximum stack size is fixed. And you can also see that it is called some waste, right? Because we have one fixed value. Some user program is very lightweight. It will only use at most one pages, but you allocate four pages for it. Some user program may have a heavy recursive uh, kind of call pass where the, it requires a larger stack, but DumbVM cannot handle it. So DumbVM use one physical page size, one stack size for all, all user programs, right? That's not efficient. That will waste the um, physical pages. So clearly, clearly, we want to improve, improve it. So here you can see the limitations of DumbVM. As we have mentioned, fixed number of regions, two. Uh, there, oh, another thing I forgot to mention is, do you see anything related to heap in the, in the structure? No. Because Typically, a user program have at least a code segment, a data segment. Some user program may have multiple data segment, but typically it has at least a one code segment and one data segment. So, some, so you can assume that the user program have at least two. And at most, how many, we don't know, but at least two. So these two corresponding to the code and data segment. So DOMVM doesn't provide heap. Uh, region to the user, user address space at all. So if some user call malloc, that will fail because there's no heap to allocate the memory from, right? So this is something you want to discuss in your design, design document. How do you support variable number of regions, right? How do you support the heap? Here you can, assume, you can treat the heap as just another segment where the initial size is zero. You don't have any heap. Whenever you receive a spread call, you just expand the heap. Right? This is another variable size region you want to support. Right? And about the stack, how, many, uh, how do you manage the stack? Remember that a stack is also a variable size region inside a user's address space. Right? And you want to improve upon this. So we want to provide variable number of regions, you, don't, you, don't, you do not want to put a limit on how many regions that a user program can have. And you also don't want to use one fixed stack size for user pro, all user programs. Right? So this is thing you need to consider uh, when you design the virtual memory system. And finally, let's see how DumbVM handles the address translation. And because DumbVM handles design the address space this way, it's very easy for DOMVM to translate the virtual address, right? For each region, 
you have virtual base, you have physical base, you have the region size. Right? For each region, you have three information. The base, virtual base, physical base, and size. So whenever you have a virtual um, address that you want, to dump, you want dump VM to translate, first you find out which region that virtual address is. You can, compare, uh, you can do it by compare the V base and N pages. Right? So first you figure out which virtual regions that, that virtual address falls into. Then you just figure out what's the offset inside the region. You first minus the virtual address by the base, so you got the offset inside the region. Then you plus that offset by the physical base. Then you get the physical address. So address translation for dump VM is quite simple, right? And this approach only works for dump VM because dump VM um, use this kind of scheme to manage all those physical uh, and virtual addresses. Another limitation you will notice from here is that, say I want to allocate four pages here, four virtual pages here. And conceptually, do I require these four um, physical pages that correspond to the virtual pages to be continuous? Right? Because I have this virtual to physical translation, one flexibility we can have is that for the continuous virtual uh, pages, we do not require the physical pages to be continuous, right? The physical pages can actually be scattered around all the address physical uh, uh, memory. We have that translation that it give user the illusion that these uh, four pages are continuous, whereas in fact they are not. But here, for dump VM, you can see that dump VM has to allocate these four pages continuously, right? Because um, it only has uh, one kind of base plus size information for this whole region instead of each page, right? So when user want have a four page sized code segment, that four, uh, that four virtual pages has to correspond to uh, four continuous physical pages. That's the limitation you have for dump VM, right? How do you want to improve upon this? Well, do not use such kind of um, brittle uh, translations. Use a clever way like page table, where for each physical page or for each virtual page, you have a translation, right? So this is where you want to discuss the design of your page table, what kind of page table you want to use. You can review the, uh, the types of page tables we discussed in lecture, decide what kind of it what kind of page table you want to use. It can be a, a one level page table, fixed size, or it can be a two level page table, or you can even use a linked list. For each page, you have a list entry. Right? Every time you just query that list. So there are a variety kind of design options you can use in terms of page table. So finally, swapping. Of course, DumbVM does, doesn't support swapping at all. When there is no memory, it just panic. Right? You, and you want to add this functionality. Um, for those of you who work alone, I don't know how many of you are there, you don't need to consider swapping. But for others who work in teams, you need to discuss swapping in the design development. So the strategy for Simon 3 overall is that you want to start with the physical page man management by first designing the call map data structure and implement these two functions. Right? Then you move on to the address space design, where you design the address space structure and also your page table. And finally, you want to handle the uh, swapping. So there are, how many weeks are there for assignment three? Like six, seven? How many? Yeah, actually Jeff was thinking about bringing the deadline of the assignment three early. <laughs> For that, I, I'm not sure. It's not final yet. <laughs> I want to bring it before the final, but anyway. So you can assume you have seven weeks, right? So you kind of do some alloca time allocation for the physical pages. I would say at most of one weeks, two weeks tops. Then for the array space, you want to spend another um, two weeks on it, and finally you want to do swapping. Swapping will take you roughly three weeks to finish. This kind of the schedule you want to stick on in the remaining of the semester. And for the design document, 
as I said, you want to discuss this stuff, like uh, the data structure design, what the car map looks like, what the address space looks like, and what the page, page table looks like, what kind of options to use. And for each of the, major, uh, the important functions, how do you want to handle it? For example, allocated K pages, free K, free K pages, right? And that's for the physical page, man, uh, physical page management, management. And for the user address space, you want to discuss whenever you have a VM fault, whether it's a TLB fault or a page fault, how would you handle it? What's the overall flow of handling uh, such a patch fault or TLB fault? Okay. And finally, we want to discuss the AS family uh, functions, function families, like uh, especially AS copy and AS define region. So those two, I think, is a little bit harder than others. I mean, AS create, AS destroy is kind of trivial. Uh, this AS copy and define region may be um, tricky to implement. And finally, you want to discuss, um, do you need a synchronization? If you, if you need a synchronization, what kind of um, primitives do you want to use? Whether or not you want to use a lock to protect uh, some shared resource, or you want to use some other kind of synchronization primitives. But you need to consider in the whole process, for example, in the physical page management, clearly you need a one synchronization where you want to synchronize the access to the call map, right? That's one example of synchronization you need to consider. And, and in VM fault, maybe you have other synchronization issues you want to consider. So that's basically what I got from today. Any, any questions on this? Yeah. Uh, virtual memory functions have man-page. That's a man directory, right? What's that? No, I don't think so. The main pages are only for syscalls. Okay. Yeah. So I would suggest you read the code and read the comment in the header files. Basically, header files is interface specification of all the functions. I think in the header file for each function, they have one or two sentences to describe the functionality of their function. They don't have, like, what's the error code to return, that's, that kind of stuff. They don't have that, but they do have some description. Any other questions? No, 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 don't do that. So read the code of dumb VM. That's a good question. Don't do that because last previous years we have students do that and they suffer a lot in the later stage. At first, it may seem easy to do. You have a lot of code, a lot of code to play with. You may want to attempt it to adapt it. Don't do that. So I would suggest you suggest that you guys start fresh from the clean slate. You can read the code of DumbVM and see what, how it does. As we have reviewed, there's not really much DumbVM does, right? So I would suggest you design the virtual memory system from scratch. Right? First design a com app and then do allocated care pages, free care pages, and so on. Don't uh, try to adapt DumbVM. That would be dumb. Any other questions? Okay then, so I'll see you next time. <laughs>